Ladies and gentlemen, and all variations thereupon, the most recent Star Wars movies were a disappointment. But there was at least one good thing to come out of them. Probably the best thing in any Star Wars movie of recent decades. That weird chimp guy that picks Kylo Ren's helmet. What's his story? I mean, is that an alien that looks like a chimp or is it an actual chimp? Is it a chimp from the planet of the apes? If so, how did he get from our future to our past and in a galaxy far, far away? Questions hopefully that will be answered in the upcoming Star Wars movies, The Fault in Our Star Wars. <sighs> I really hope so that Scrum finds his happy ending. But anyway, there was one other good thing to come from these Star Wars movies, and that is the costuming. And one thing that I've particularly envied ever since seeing The Force Awakens is Ray's belt. I just thought it looked cool. So I'm going to have a go at crafting my own version of Ray's belt. This isn't going to be a cosplay belt, so it's not going to be 100% screen accurate, but I'm going to get it to look roughly the same. And there's a few things that I'm going to go, I'm going to talk about whilst creating the belt. But I'm going to try and create this belt to be roughly accurate to what we see on screen. And if you wanted to use inner cosplay, I don't think anyone but the most uh, discerning connoisseur of Star Wars would be able to really poke holes in it. Since as the bits that I can, I'm hoping to change are going to be the bits that are on screen that often. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so. I've already started the process by drafting basically the paper mock-up of the belt. Now, uh, you always want to create a paper mock-up before you're cutting out your leather. Because you don't want to cut out your leather and then find out it's the wrong size and just waste a bunch of leather. One of the most easy and readily available materials you can use for crafty for crafting and mock uh, creating mock-ups is going to be paper. This is just lining paper, the sort you use for wallpaper, putting underneath wallpaper. And it works good as just a drafting material. If I have to do patterns for sewing, I do it on lining paper. Fairly cheap and easily accessible. And you can wrap it around your body, which makes it good for things like belts and cuffs and uh, things like that. And it's recyclable. And the way I'm going to get it to sit is slightly higher than I wear my belt. This isn't a belt to hold up my trousers or pants if you're American. It's a more just a fashion belt. If you need a belt to hold up your trousers, then you need a, uh, a narrower waist on your trousers, different size trousers. And Ray tends to have her belt up around the curve of the waist, up fairly high. I, however, don't really quite want it that high. The reason being that when you're wearing something like a belt, or when you've got something which cuts you off at a particular area, like the edge of a sleeve, it kind of changes how the eye perceives that person or that thing. So um, if you're wearing trousers with short uh, legs on them, capri trousers or something like that, then your legs will look shorter because the trousers are shorter and they cut you off at a higher level. Which, okay, right time. You see, up until sort of just after World War II, a lot of the shaping done to someone's body, particularly a woman's body, was done with clothing. If you wanted your bum to look bigger, you'd put padding on it. If you wanted your waist to look narrower, you'd use something like a corset. Corsets have a bit of a bad rap, they're not as bad as people think. But in the modern days, we don't tend to do the shaping of the body with clothing. We try and shape the body itself and, you know, have unhealthy expectations for how the body's supposed to look, you know, extreme diets or try and create a really narrow waist and a large bust and big bum and this, that and the other. So when you're creating clothing for yourself, 
or you're thinking about how you're going to wear it. Try and make the clothing work for how you want to look rather than trying to create your body to look good in particular clothing. So, rant over. I'm going to use this belt to cut me at the uh, sort of height that I like to be cut at in order to give myself a more pleasing figure. Now, to sit around there so it comes sort of around the back of my bum and sits on my hip. So that's the sort of length I'm looking for and I've cut this pattern already to reflect the different lengths that I need. And now with that mark out, we can get cutting. I then use a rotary hole punch to make holes ready for the pop studs. Okay, so what I've got set up here is I've put the belt onto paper, onto plastic. The plastic is to catch the uh, dye as it comes up and protect my floor. But because the plastic is so waterproof, if the dye gets onto the eaves, I've got a tendency to try and pull into the lowest part. So I've got newspaper on top of it to absorb. Also wearing gloves because this dye is designed to change the colour of animal hide and guess what my skin is made of. So what I'm going to do is take a sponge, fresh sponge, dip it in the dye and just wipe it. I made a bit of a boo boo. You see, when you're working with leather, the ideal thing that you want to do is burnish your leather on the sides. And ideally, you'd want to do that before you've done all the dyeing. But I forgot to do it. Give me a break, I'd had a long day at work before I did that. So, the uh, burnishing hasn't been done, and I'm going to have to do it now after I've already uh, dyed it, which it's okay, you can do it, but it'll work better if you do it beforehand. And the way you uh, burnish, you get either gum tarkin or, as I'm using, water, which is why it work better before you dye it because it will absorb easier into the leather. And you just run it along the side. Then, once you've got that damp, take the uh, tool that you would use to burnishing, burnishing tool, select an appropriate size notch put it against your leather and just rub backwards and forwards. Now, pressure isn't what we're looking for. What burnishes it is the friction and the heat of the uh, rubbing. And because you've wet the leather, even with water, with the gum, it will, the leather will mould, it will become more supple. One thing I didn't do deliberately is I didn't bevel the edges of this. With most leather working projects when you're going to burnish, you bevel the edges first, then burnish. Because when you're uh, burnishing, if it's not been beveled, it can tend to bend over. Because this is a belt from a character who is supposed to have been stranded on Jakku, a desert planet with virtually no signs of wildlife, or at least not large wildlife, chances are the leather that Ray had for making a belt has come from being scavenged from the uh, Star Destroyer. I don't think she's going to have been able to make herself a belt and bevel the edges and everything like that. Burnishing she could do because, like I said, it's just friction. You just find something with an appropriate size notch. But beveling the edge, she's not going to have the appropriate tool. It's possible to do with just a blade, but it'd be very difficult. So I'm going to assume a young woman stranded on a desert planet 
spending all their time scavenging has just found a strip of leather, probably from a bang belt or something, and then fashioned it into a belt by just cutting it up and then attaching it around her. I'm going to burnish the edges, but I'm not going to bevel them. Right, so the way we're going to attach the belt is with saps. Now in order to place these onto the belt we've got a little anvil that's got a concave side so that we don't crush the um, rounded snap and the facing of the snap is just like a little button with a male prong sticking out. Then there's the female side that has a hole in the middle and the little curve with the into which the other part will snap. The idea is we place the snap through the leather, put the female end on there, then we take this what is essentially like a little stylus and place that into the centre. So the male part is hollow and we're placing the tip into the hollow of it. Then take a hammer and give a couple of good solid knots. bend it'll bend the outside of the uh, hollow of the male part and lock in the female part and with that done the final piece of the puzzle is to wrap around the where the bifurcation is because Ray has a um, wrapped with leather cord. The way I'm going to do it is to tie it under, wrap it round a few times individually and then go around the whole thing. It may not be a screen replica of Ray's belt, but it's certainly in the spirit of a scavenger from Dracula. All that's left now is to create a bag and lightsaber holster and I'll be ready to go.